Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a buffalo plaid pattern in Adobe Illustrator. Inside Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to start with a new file. It does not matter how big your file is. I'm just going to create one that is screen size. I'm going to the rectangle tool. I'm going to make sure that it's set to black as the color and I'm going to make sure it does not have a stroke. And then I'm going to click in the document and make a rectangle, which is actually a square of 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Then I'll click back on it, hold the Alt or Option key and drag a duplicate away. And this one I'm just going to line up at the bottom corner of this. And I'm going to set this to the red color that I want to use. So if you don't get your red color right, don't worry, because we're going to get another chance at altering this later on. Now I'm going to select and drag away another copy of this red shape. I'm holding the Alt key as I do that. Let me just move into this area so we can focus on working here. I'm going to create a line. So I'm going to the line segment tool. I'm going to make sure that my line is black. And I'm going to drag out a line that's a perfectly vertical line. I'm holding the shift key as I do it. I want it to be quite long at this stage. We're going to cut it off in a minute. I'm going to make this 10 pixels wide. I'm just choosing an even number, which is advisable. I'm also eyeballing it to see that this is the kind of line that I want in my buffalo plaid, and it is. I'm going to select it, hold down the shift key, and just rotate it 45 degrees. Holding down the shift key ensures that it's going to rotate 45 degrees. I'm trying to line it up here to the corner of the square, but to make sure I'm right, I'm going into view and then outline. Outline mode lets me check to make sure that everything is really nicely lined up, which it is. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to grab a duplicate of this line. So I'm going back to the selection tool, click on the line, hold the Alt key and drag a duplicate down to the bottom corner, again, making sure that it's lining up perfectly. Having done that, I'll choose View and then GPU Preview. I'm pressing Control or Command Zero to go back out so that I can see where I'm working. Now I've lost the color in my rectangle here, so let me just go and select it and select the color from the original one here. I'm going to click on both of these lines. So click on the first one, shift and click on the second one. So you've got them both selected. Go to object and then blend and make. And then double click on this blend tool here. Now we want specified steps and we want an even number of steps. The reason for this is that if it was an odd number of steps, the line is going to go through this corner. And when it's turned into a pattern, it's going to look like it's missing a bit. So if you use an even number, it's going to look perfect. At this stage, you're just looking at these lines and saying, do I have enough lines or do I want more? I'm going to make mine fairly intense. So I am using 12 steps. I'll click OK. Now everything is still selected. I want it to still be selected. I'm going to choose Object and then Blend and then Expand. And while I'm here, Object and then Ungroup until Ungroup is no longer an option. And still while I have everything selected, I'm just going to choose Expand and click OK. Now let's check on the Layers panel and say what it is that we've got. Well, everything is inside groups. So at this stage, I'm going back to object and then ungroup until ungroup is no longer an option. So what I have now is these lines have been turned into shapes. And this is, of course, a shape as well. And when things are shapes, we can use the shape builder on them. So I'm going back to the selection tool. I'm going to select over everything again, because previously just these sort of lines that are now shapes were selected. But I want to also select this red shape. I'm going over here to the Shape Builder tool. It shares a toolbar position with the Live Paint Bucket tool. So you might find it under that. Hold the Alt or Option key and just drag over the lines outside of this red circle and that just removes them. Everything is still selected and you want it to still be selected because right now it will be really useful to you if you choose Object and then Group because that makes this shape a group and when it's a group it travels as a group of objects. So we're going to place it down in here and then Alt and drag a duplicate up here. 
Now I'm going to select over everything. I'm going to the transform options here. I'm just going to check that it says 400 and 400. So that's telling me that everything should be nicely lined up. Because this was a 200 by 200 pixel square, when I have a shape that's made up of four of them, it should read 400 by 400. I'm going to select absolutely everything here. Go to the swatches panel and drag and drop it into the swatches panel. It needs to be dragged and dropped into this top area. You can't drag and drop it into a color group. And if you can't drag and drop it in here at all, make sure that you have show all swatches selected here. So just click this icon and make sure to select show all swatches because that then gives you this area into which you can drag and drop your pattern. Now I don't need this any longer, so I'm just going to delete it. I'll create a rectangle that is the size of my artboard. In my case, that's 1920 by 1080. Square it up in my artboard with the foreground color selected. I'm just going to click on my pattern and then I'll choose object transform scale because it's pretty large. Here I want to disable transform objects because I don't want to transform my object. I just want to transform my pattern. And I'm going to bring my pattern down to whatever value it is that I want. I think about 40% will be just fine. I'll click OK. Now, I'm not sure about you, but this is really bright on my screen. So what I'm going to do at this stage is with this rectangle selected, I'm going up here to the Recolor Artwork dialog. I'll click Advanced Options. And then I'm going to click on edit and this will allow me to edit this red color. So for example, I can bring its brightness down a little bit. You can also decrease its saturation if I wanted to and I can also change the color so I can drag around on the hue slider so that I can have a buffalo plaid that is a different color than the traditional red. So you have plenty of options here for dealing with the fact that the color wasn't right in the first place and you probably will want to make your pattern before you do start changing the color because it's very hard to anticipate exactly how it's going to look. When I click OK and open up the swatches panel you see that I still have the original pattern but I've also got this recolored pattern. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.